I'm in Frankfurt, Germany. I was invited here to play something called the Drum Camp. And um, it's a nice event this year. There's not so many drum companies showing up in Frankfurt, so the fair got a bit smaller, but I'm happy that I was invited to play. And I like the walk. It's a good warm-up, actually. And it's sunny, good weather here. We're lucky. So it's a nice event. I feel like I'm in good company, and I'm playing two times a day. And this it's a, like a little soundproof drum room, and it's full every day. So it seems people want this and are enjoying it. So that's what I'm doing here, spreading the word about drumming. I'm playing some older fusion music from my old solo records. But it was interesting because when I went back and started playing this music, some of these songs I haven't played in about five years. And when I started to play them, I realized that the old drumming that I did five years ago was not good. Maybe I got better. So I started to change the solo. So it's a bit more, I made it a bit more complicated. And I was a bit inspired by um, some of the new drummers I've been seeing. I'm not a big fan of gospel chop drumming, but some of these guys, I mean, they're all great, you know, a lot of these guys that are known for that. I think it's a bit too much, too many notes, but I was a bit inspired and I tried to take some of those influences and mix it with my rock style just to kind of update myself. I think uh, it's important to change with the times, you know, I just don't want to come out and be a fossil and, yeah, this is what I did in 86, you know, and take it, you know, and everyone's like, yeah, we saw this already. So you have to, you have to put the time in, you have to put in the work. And uh, so I reintroduced this old music here with new drumming and seems people like it. And I got a couple new songs that I worked on, so. You know, I guess I know enough about music to call myself somewhat of a musician, but I'm not so interested in all the theoretical aspects of rhythm. I mean, you can, you can study rhythm until the end of time and a lot of it, no one will understand. You know, you can play two against three or five against 16 or whatever and all these polyrhythms and stuff. I see a lot of guys doing stuff with pedals and it, it's impressive, but I liked drummers that were exciting and powerful and not so complex. Then again, I, I like drummers like Tony Williams and stuff too. I love jazz and fusion, Billy Cobham, Simon Phillips, Terry Bazio. They're all beautiful drummers in their own right. But all of these drummers had a personality. What I'm seeing now is due to the fact of the internet, you see a lot of homogenation. Everyone's starting to play the same. So my whole approach to drumming has always been fun, power, athleticism, wildness. And you can see that when I play, people like to see something. That's even why I have this funny haircut, you know. I, nobody wants to watch a guy who looks like a banker playing the drums. That's not exciting. That doesn't that doesn't interest anyone, you know? And no one is so interested in the perfection, a perfectly played buzz roll. They're interested in power. They want to feel something, emotions. Music is emotional. The whole, the whole thing I try to do is, especially if I'm playing in a big room, is I try to reach the people with the power and the emotion. You try to touch them without actually touching them. You try to say something without actually saying it. That is the art of music, that is the art of communication, that is the art of entertainment. A lot of people don't realize that when you get on stage, you will entertain. You're there to entertain people. You're not there to entertain yourself. And I've been criticized in the past for twirling and juggling and making faces and making jokes and having fun. Some guys were jealous and said, oh, you're a show-off, the American show-off drummer is here. But I can tell you that these guys were showing off in the lobby of the hotel, like showing off their new watch or whatever. Nobody cares. For me, it's all about drumming. I sit around all day in the hotel so that I can play, and I try to play as good as I can in those 90 minutes, give it 100%, you know, and I show off on stage. Yes, the stage is for showing off. I enjoy playing by myself. The chains are off, you know? No one tells me what I can do. And I think that's why I wanted to play drums. I want to do what I want. We're not free in this life. So if you find a job where you can express yourself and, and show your personality and your creativity and make a living at it, you're a lucky person. So that's what I'm trying to do. I spend a lot of time trying to combine all these things. 
it's important for me how the drums look. It's always been important, um, and I think it's... I like the drums to have aesthetically look beautiful. I like them to be symmetrical. I see a lot of guys, they just... They put their drums together. They don't really care if the cymbal's in the, in the face and stuff, you know. They put it where they need it. But I've always designed the drum set to look cool, and then I learn how to play it. So a lot of people think uh, it's kind of stupid that I do that. I have the cymbals very high, but... You know, if you watch me play on that big kit, it, it's impressive. It's athletic, and I, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to mix athleticism with music and drumming and showmanship. I guess I consider myself more of an athlete than a musician. Of course, drumming has something to do with music, but you don't have to understand so many things about music, the theoretical aspects of music, to be a good drummer in a good band. If you can play a beat and you're powerful and the beat is steady, in other words, it's in time and your fills are in time, they don't have to be complicated, you can work. I don't know what, how it is for guitar or bass or whatever, but drum drummers are, they really like to hang together and uh, be part of it and get the posters and look at the equipment. And they all like to play drums at the same time. It's very loud in there, as you well know, right? All these young guys in there come down with their sticks and everyone's doing a drum solo at the same time. So you've got that going on while you're doing the autograph signing session. Then you're back in making your own noise. It's pretty crazy. It's, it's interesting. I can't walk very far without somebody stopping me and asking for a picture or something. And again, I remember in the early days, no one would stop me. I would just be walking. No one cared. So I took a lot of pictures and shook a lot of hands. But it's good. You know, I'm happy that people know who I am. I remember there was a time when I first started playing, I remember first coming to the Frankfurt Music Fair and going to the NAMM show in LA. Nobody knew who I was, nobody cared. I didn't have a gig, I wasn't making records, so I was new. So I'm happy that people recognize me and hopefully enjoy what I'm doing. I think if you have a job in the entertainment business and you get a little bit of notoriety, I wouldn't say fame in my case, but I think you have to be kind and recognize the fact that someone appreciates your work. Stop eating, take a picture, sign an autograph. It's not a big deal. I've had many jobs when I was younger, and no one asks you for your autograph, and it's a pretty boring day, so I'm happy. Well, I mean, I'm glad that some young people see me as a role model. Uh, that's kind of a nice compliment, you know, that, and, and maybe I, I think I am a good role model because I'm a happy, funny guy. I'm a positive person. I'm not doing drugs. I'm not drinking. Um, I'm practicing a lot. I'm in shape. And I think that's what you need to do to have a long career. Yeah, I would like to be more of that kind of a role model for people. I'm not really a positive speaker or anything like that, but if I can motivate someone to play drums or inspire someone to play drums, or even just inspire someone to go and do something that they thought they couldn't do. And that's what's important for me. I, you know, when I was younger, I just wanted to see if I could make a living playing the drums, and everyone told me I couldn't do it. Everyone told me, you're crazy, you can't do this. And then I did it. And so now I'm 56 years old, and I'm like, okay, now the challenge is you did it. You're a drummer. You're Mike Tirana. How much longer can you do it? Yeah, I want to go on. And I think the, the older I get and the, the more intensity that I can keep and still stay in shape, I think I'm going to freak people out. That's even going to be more of a freak show. <laughs>